Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, we're going to look at the kidney model that I have. Um, this model starts with a large kidney that you can see here, and then it takes one of the pyramids, these are the pyramids, and it blows up the pyramid so you can see the entire pyramid. So you could say this part of the model is a magnification of a pyramid. And then the last part, um, if you look at the base of the pyramid here, under the pyramid in the cortical layer of the kidney, you see the renal corpuscles. Excuse me. This, this last part of the model is basically a blow up of those renal corpuscles. So this is just one of these little yellow circle things expanded or magnified. Let's go back to the kidney and look at some of the major features. Um, the first thing I'll point out is this gland up above here. This is the adrenal gland. The outside's the adrenal cortex, and this is the adrenal medulla. You might remember that from covering endocrine system. The kidney. We have the cortex of the kidney, which is the outer layer. And those are where we're going to find the renal corpuscles. And then we have the medulla of the kidney, the medullary region. In the medullary region, there are the pyramids. The renal sinus is this whole neighborhood in here. It has the collecting apparatus for collecting urine off of the pyramids or the renal papilla as they come off of the renal papilla. And the sinus also contains blood vessels and it contains adipose tissue. Coming off of each of the pyramids where the urine is actually produced, the first channel coming off of a pyramid is called minor calyx. So this would be a minor calyx, this would be a minor calyx, this is a minor calyx, and this is a minor calyx. The areas where we have two minor calyx come together, or two minor calyces coming together, would be a major calyx. So this is a major calyx. Um, that's a papilla down there, so there's two minor calyces coming together. That'd be a major calyx. Minor, minor, major calyx. And then here where the urine leads into this larger chamber, this is called the renal pelvis. The renal pelvis then leads into the ureter. So this down here is the ureter. Vascular. This is the renal artery in red, and in blue is the renal vein. These two branches off of the renal artery are segmental arteries. And then we go to the arteries branching up and going between the pyramids. Those are called interlobar arteries. So this would be an interlobar artery and vein. This is an interlobar artery and vein. This is an interlobar artery. This is an interlobar artery. This is an interlobar artery. artery. Then if we go to the base of the pyramid, each one of them, we have arcuate arteries and veins. Arcuate arteries and veins. No veins on this part of the model, though. Arcuate arteries, arcuate arteries, arcuate arteries. Branching up from the arcuate arteries, we have interlobular arteries. And notice that the interlobular arteries feed blood to the renal corpuscles. So interlobular arteries, and they feed blood to the renal corpuscles. In this kidney, you can see, it, in reality, it's microscopic. Here they've made it larger so that you can see it. But you can see the tubules in white here and a collecting duct. Let's go over to the next part of the model and look at the pyramid close up. So this is renal pyramid. This is the cortex layer. This is the connective tissue capsule of the kidney on top. Within the cortex, we see the renal corpuscles. 
and we can see two nephrons outlined here and another nephron outlined here. This is the part of the model that I like to use to ask about the tubules. So here's a renal corpuscle. The first tube coming off of the renal corpuscle, or this section of the tube, is called the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal convoluted tubule. Then the tube dips down into the pyramid, down into the medullary layer, and the part that dips down in there is called the nephron loop, or the loop of Henle. Has a descending and an ascending side to it. And then up here we have the distal convoluted tubule that leads into a collecting duct. So to go over them again, renal corpuscle, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle or nephron loop, distal convoluted tubule, and collecting duct. Note that the collecting duct has this nephron feeding into it, and then another nephron here, another nephron here, another nephron here, and so on. The collecting ducts usually have hundreds of nephrons leading into them. On this nephron, again, renal corpuscle, proximal convoluted tubule, nephron loop or loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, collecting duct. Oh, there's another nephron down here I didn't mention before. Renal corpuscle, proximal convoluted tubule, nephron loop or loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, and collecting duct. Down here at the point of the pyramid of the kidney is the renal papilla. And this is where the urine, finally formed urine, is released out into a calyx. So this would be a minor calyx down here. That's what the opening would be called. Let's move on to the glomerulus, or the renal corpuscle. So this whole structure here again is a renal corpuscle. On the inside of the renal corpuscle, we have the glomerulus, glomerulus. So all of these are glomerular, glomerular capillaries. Uh, notice on some of them, they've painted them with what look like podocytes. So these are glomerular capillaries covered with podocytes. This is the artery that leads into the glomerulus, or the arteriole, excuse me. So this would be the afferent arteriole. One of the ways to recognize it, recognize it is it has a thick layer of smooth muscle around it, whereas the other one does not. So this is afferent arteriole, taking blood into the glomerular capillaries. And this is efferent arteriole, taking blood away from the glomerular capillaries or away from the glomerulus. Another thing for lecture to remember is that the efferent arteriole branches and turns into the uh, paratubular capillaries. This part of the model on top is the distal convoluted tubule. Remember that the distal convoluted tubule comes back and makes a connection between these arterioles and that's part of the signaling mechanism for controlling flow of filtrate. Down at the bottom, we have the proximal convoluted tubule. I think I missed something back here, so let's go back. Um, remember, these are the pyramids in the medullary region. In between the pyramids, we have the renal columns. The interlobar arteries and veins pass through the renal columns, if that helps you remember it. And the renal columns basically are the same kind of tissue that you find in the cortex. So you do see um, renal corpuscles down here in the renal columns. I think that pretty much covers everything that I can show you on this model. So thanks once again for watching, and get studying.